Hello, my name is Andy and I am the Village Idiot. I'm armed with a car and a GoPro and an unhealthy amount of time on my hands. I'm using that time to attempt to visit every civil parish in England. You're watching the North East Lincolnshire series, centred around Grimsby and Cleethorpes along the Humber Estuary. North East Lincolnshire has 21 civil parishes. Here's today's for you. Welcome back to North East Lincolnshire, folks. Now, one thing you will learn in North East Lincolnshire as I go through this series is how industrialised the south bank of the Humber is. Stallingborough, where we are today, is no exception because there are no end of businesses along the Humber estuary here. One of them is this. That is the South Humber Bank power station and that is where we're beginning the parish of Stalinborough. Here's my disclaimer for people who may be watching me for the first time. I say things as I would in my native accent and dialect. As a result, I may not pronounce things in the same way as the locals do. Remember, I'm a visitor. It's impossible to know everything. Leave me a comment, spin me a like and bash that subscribe button. Let's get to today's parish video. Welcome to Stallingborough, a village which sits about three and a half miles inland of the Humber Estuary, almost on northeast Lincolnshire's border with West Lindsay. The main village is the only major settlement here, but its boundaries include many industrial estates and a small hamlet called Little London. In the Doomsday Book, it was recorded as Stalingburg or Stalingburg. Like most of its neighbours on the South Humber Bank, Stalingborough sits in the shadow of Grimsby and Immingham and often gets forgotten about. However, this is a village that's so rich in history, it's hard to understand why. Most people just know the name thanks to the Stallingborough Interchange on the A180, which bypasses the village to the north. Stallingborough is the burial place of three very important people. First, William Askew, a juror in the trial of Anne Boleyn, and the father of Anne Askew, who was burned at the stake. Secondly, Ernest Slight, or Sir Ernest Slight, a baronet who was High Sheriff of Lincolnshire. And third, the Anglo-Saxon female saint, Avba, who once had a chapel here according to a will dating from 1530. Stallingborough also has a lot of wartime connections, mainly in the form of a gun battery which was placed along the Humber foreshore. There was also another smaller one at Little London. And if that's not enough, it's also got a power station. Let's get walking. We begin on the south bank of the River Humber. Not that you can see the Humber from here, mind you. This is the South Humber Bank Power Station. Employing 64 people, this power station is owned by EP UK Investments Limited, a daughter company of EP Power Europe, which in turn is owned by the Czech Energy Group, EPH. It was built in the late 1990s. Construction began in 1994 and part of it was completed in 1997. At that time, it entered service, generating 750 megawatts of power. A further 510 was added with the completion of Phase 2 in 1999. Its location on the river is important as it draws its cooling water from the Humber. To generate power, though, it uses natural gas. There are five gas turbines here in all. It was initially owned by a Finnish company, but for a lot of its life it was run by Centrica. EPH would buy the plant from Centrica in 2017, and here we are today. 
And today you're going to get your special section really early because apart from that power station, there's a lot more industrial things out here in Stalingrad, including another lighthouse. Who would have thought that on the, on the uh, Humber Estuary? It's not as if we've seen them before. Anyway, here that all comes in one nice little section for you. That lighthouse was known as Stalingrad Light. It was built in 1849, located in a ferry house on the eastern bank of Northbeck Drain, an outlet to the Humber. The northeast of Stalingrad Parish is heavily industrialised. In 1953, National Titanium Pigments Limited established a titanium dioxide plant on the site of a former gun battery out here. The battery was used during World War I in much the same way as Fort Paul was on the other side of the Humber estuary. The plant became known as Battery Works. It later became part of a host of other corporations, including Crystal in 2007, who were then acquired by the American chemical company Tronox in 2019. In the 1960s, more chemical plants were built at a site to the southeast of the Battery Works. These would eventually become Synthoma, which still exists today. And in the 1970s, another industrial area developed to the southwest of the Battery Works. 88 acres of it is now a vehicle handling site used by Kia Motors. Our main walk begins on Station Road at the village's one and only pub, The Green Man, which is also our end point. The Green Man is a popular name for a pub. A lot of pubs with the name Green Man were originally called the Wild Man, whilst others are a reference to Robin Hood. Whatever the case is here, I do know the food's good. Over the road is Orchard Barn, an alternative medical centre whose full name is the Northern Centre of Integrative and Functional Medicine. Try saying that three times fast. Also on Station Road, there's a bus stop, but this one's not in use. Stalingrad is served by a number of routes, which will get you to Grimsby, Cleethorpes and Barton. There's also a school. There's been one in Stalingrad since 1847. This is Stalingrad CFE Primary. And the reason this is called Station Road is, well, pretty obvious. Halfway along its length is Stalingrad Railway Station, another on the Barton Line, which was built in 1848, the same year as the one in Great Coats. Right, so, which way is your money on? Which way is this train coming, Nikki? Uh, I don't know. I, 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 that way I can oh. see it. <laughs> <laughs> you cheated because you can see the lights in the distance. I don't know whether it'll stop here. Right, well, because the next one to stop here is not until 10 past 12 and it's only half past 11. Uh, going to Cleethorpes. Yeah, obviously this is coming in the direction of Cleethorpes. Might as well record this coming past. It is a passenger train, I think. Can't quite tell from this distance. Oh wait, here it comes now. They come past pretty quickly. These, you know. There we are. Yes, it is. Yeah, it said it was going to the depot, didn't it? Yeah. Right, let's move on. Oh, they're up now. They're up now. Okay, off we go. What's on that for? A right turn almost immediately after the station will take you onto the playing field. This is a reasonable size and it features a couple of football pitches. There's a small playground in the far distance. Squint and you might be able to see it. As far as I'm aware, Stalingrad doesn't have a football team or a cricket club, but I am happy to be told otherwise on those. A search for any clubs in the usual places yielded nothing for Stalingrad. Beyond the playing fields now, we're on a long footpath which runs all the way up to the church, and that's where we're going. This isn't an easy walk. It crosses quite a few little streams which run through an area that seemed to be a mixture of waste ground, wooded copses and small fields. It's not a solid base either, and it was quite squelchy in places. As a result of that, our feet were caked in mud by the end. It's not a pleasant walk in the winter, it would seem. I think this has to be one of the worst footpaths we've ever walked on. I think it'll be all right in the summer. In the summer, yeah. But of course it's winter right now and everything's it's just foggy. horrible. 
We are nearly at the end of it though. It's a long footpath this and it runs all the way to the church like I said earlier. The church is behind those trees there. So when we get off it we should be sort of on terra firma again and we should be able to, yeah. to, uh, to get on much better, hopefully. The Church of St Peter and St Paul is a brick-built structure dating from between 1779 and 1781. It stands a long way away from the main village centre on a dead-end road. There's a war grave in its churchyard. The man buried here was a holder of the Military Cross, a military honour which was only given to officers before 1993. The church is not Stalingrad's first. Predating this, there was a medieval church which collapsed in 1746 and there was also another small chapel. It was dedicated to St Avba according to the will of Richard Houghton in 1530. St Avba was an Anglo-Saxon saint and Stalingrad is her burial place. It's also the burial place of a former High Sheriff of Lincolnshire too. This is the final resting place of the Baronet Sir Ernest Slight who died in 1946. Lastly here, earthworks. These are the remains of Stalingrad's medieval village south of the church. It was ravaged by the Black Death in the 14th century. Still knocking mud off my feet, and so is Nikki. It's uh, it's quite bad, <laughs> quite bad. I've got to tell you, I need to buy some wellies. I think. Right, uh, we are now heading into civilization anyway, so there's plenty of opportunities for us to knock the mud off our feet. We're going to head down Church Lane and into what's effectively the village centre. Church Lane now, a long, twisty street with some interesting and characterful old houses. We like this one, Daisy Cottage. There's a link below to see inside. Now, seeing as we're in a residential area, I'll briefly mention Stalingrad's famous family, the Askews, who once lived in a huge, now demolished mansion. William Askew is buried in the village. He was a juror in the trial of Anne Boleyn, and his daughter Anne was burned at the stake in 1546. Her story is told in the South Kelsey episode, linked in today's end screen. We're now back on Station Road at the village shop, and this serves food. Some of you who know this shop may have seen reports of a bad hygiene rating here recently. The new owners have addressed this, and it now has a five-star rating once again. On the wall of the shop, we have the parish notice board. Mark off Stalingrad, everyone. That's three down and 18 to go in northeast Lincolnshire. So the shop is uh, also partly a hair salon. As you can see at the end here, there's the, the salon, rather imaginatively named. And in the wall of the salon, you have a recessed post box. And this one is George V. Now, Nikki has gone off that way. Uh, I'll see her again at the railway station. I am going this way because there's a few interesting things to catch down here. One of which is quite a long walk away, and you'll see what I mean in a few moments. We're heading for the B1210. On the way, we pass Stallingborough Lodge, a care home for the over 65s, which is run by Shire Care. The B1210 is the road which bypasses Stallingborough to the south. This was built in around 1960, upgrading the old road between Stallingborough and Healing. There's a car showroom down here, Stallingborough Car Centre, run by Mark Stanham, a man with over 30 years experience in the motor trade. This end of the village also has an old windmill, and it looks like this. It's on private land away to our right here, off the A1173 towards Ryby. The original plan was to walk down the B1210 a bit further, but I opted to take this little shortcut onto the old Healing Road, as there's no footpath. And this is the building I was heading for. Like Great Coats, Stallingborough has a Plymouth Brethren Christian Church. So you can see here where the old Healing Road used to go. There's a footpath these days at the end of the road there, which takes you onto the current Healing Road. And this is the old road. And we're going to follow the old road back for a short way. There's a footpath on the right, which will take us through 
a housing estate which you can see over there there's a few other odds and ends to catch before we reconvene with Nikki at the railway station Via a footpath off Healing Road, we're now into the last section of the walk. Off the path which leads to Leggett Way are the village allotments. The joke keeps running. After walking through Leggett Way, which is nothing much more than a modern housing estate, you're back to Station Road again. It's the village hall next. This was built in 1950 and has served Stallingborough ever since. It was refurbished in 2010 and it can hold up to 140 people at full capacity. The last stretch of the route takes us past another entrance to the playing field and this little memorial garden, known as the community garden to the locals. In recent years, a plaque was installed here commemorating Stallingborough's World War I airfield at Greenland Top, used by the RAF between 1916 and 1919. And lastly, we have a former chapel. This was a Wesleyan chapel, which was built in 1864. The Primitive Methodists also had one in Stalingrad too, and it dated to 1871. Ah, oh, found the wife. Are you waiting for a train, dear? 25 minutes. Where's it going? Barton. Hey, nice place, Barton. We, we enjoyed that, didn't we? Walking on the bridge. Fancy doing it again? <laughs> hey, it weren't that bad. It weren't that bad. Has there been many trains come past? Three. Three? Ah, small fry. <laughs> right. Okay, let's go and get to the pub then, shall we? To the Green Man. I think it's uh, a good place to go for some foodies, don't you? Okay, see you there in a sec. And call into the Green Man we did. We shared this house share a platter, and trust me, it was really, really good. I can thoroughly recommend the Green Man, folks. It's uh, a lovely pub with great food. We are certainly stuffed now, aren't we, Nikki? We're absolutely yeah, stuffed now. Me, I'm done. <laughs> I was just saying a few moments ago, even though I've re-recorded this because I've made a mess up of the first um, first try of this. Mm -hmm. It's not all about the food inside a pub and the drink it's it's about everything else it's the atmosphere it's the people behind yeah. the bar it's even the locals as well and you and miss uh, there's a massive big food room at the back where i've just been through to the ladies it's quite full of people as well it's busy in there oh is it mm -hmm. i say the part we were in was fairly quiet yeah. it, it didn't seem very busy at all but a pub doesn't, doesn't necessarily need to be busy to be good of mm -hmm. course um sometimes sometimes pubs can be quite quiet and they're the best pubs going but um, some people, yeah, some people look for that. <laughs> they do, yeah. Anyway, I can thoroughly recommend the Green Man. So if you're ever in Stallingborough, make sure you call in and try them out. I'm going to move on to my next one here in northeast Lincolnshire. 
So that's been the parish of Stalinborough, and I've been Andy, also known as the Village Idiot, and I'm out.